Alright, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to break it down to you, my AK setup, um, and kind of give you the whole story on what led me to getting into an AK and how, how I have my AK set up and the AK I chose to go with. And uh, so yeah, let's get into this video, you uh, macadamia nuts and buttercups. The weapon is clear. But, got a little something right here. But anyways, so let's get into this thing. So what led me to getting in this AK was basically, uh, you know, like everybody else, I kind of, I was always a bolt action guy, always into, uh, always kind of been into hunting and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, with the state of everything at the time, I think, uh, maybe Obama was in office and the whole thing got brought up, uh, you know, we shouldn't have ARs and all this nonsense. Well, I heard that and I was like, man, I should get me a, I should get me one while I still can. I've always been one of those guys that I just want one that I want something that might could go away. You know, I've just been like that with everything. Um, and whether it be camo styles or anything like that. So I just was like, man, it'd be nice to, it'd be smart to have a semi-automatic rifle around. Well, at first I went with an AR. I picked up a Diamondback 15, pretty much bare minimum AR. And it was severely overgassed. Out of the box, that Diamondback had a burr on the hammer. And it caused it to cycle the first round. And then... It would cycle the first round, I could shoot it, I'd have to flip it on safety, then throw it back on fire to be able to shoot that second round. Anyways, that led me going down to my local gun shop. I had been looking at uh, a Zostava M70 for a while. I'd go into the shop, it's a, lo it's a local shop that has a coffee shop in it and stuff, and uh, with coffee shop and a gun shop, I mean, who cannot like that, so. Um, I had my eye on one of these tiger striped, and I had never seen an AK with like tiger striped wood, and that's kind of what turned me on to it. Um, so I picked up the AK. I want to think I spent about twelve out the door, uh, which is a little more expensive. You're going to pay for uh, then you're going to pay for you know kind of get one online and stuff. But I actually ended up going with a Zostava M70, and these M70s are built like tanks. You can go on to Reddit and find the worst information about them, and then you can go on, you can go back on to Reddit and find really good information about them. Um, on YouTube, I didn't even really look into it. I trusted the guy by his word. He said they're reliable. He said they're mid, mid-tier AKs. They're not entry-level AKs. They're not top of the top. And and the way of the AKs. It's crazy, but now top of the top is these old parts kits that are unavailable or really hard to get or old arsenals that have been imported and now they don't make that model number anymore so the price of those went up or old 74s, uh, old B Bulgarian parts kits that you know date back before pre-ban and those are more expensive. So the AK world is just not like the AR world as in new is not really better it's actually old is better there it's more about the nostalgia in the AK world and it is functionality too because as the AKs have you know changed and stuff like that the quality it hasn't gone down some companies have have went up in terms of Zostava at least from what I've seen is a lot of people have had tr troubles with their uh, receivers and bolt carrier groups and the tolerance to the metals inside of them but uh, right now they're they're 1.5 receiver bolts trunnions, um, chrome line barrels, 16.1 inch uh, barrel length. Um, they're Yugo pattern rifles. So <laughs> hardcore a AK guys, some even AK guys are like, yeah, it's an AK platform. It's not an AK 47. It's a Yugo AK. Well, they're right. You know, technically, these Yugos have. A slightly more slanted it's a it's a different stock basically and uh, so anyways I went out and shot this AK man and 
after I shot it, had it was it was bare bones. All I had, I bought. I actually did the first day I bought because I'm like I'm not running this with irons. I want an optic on it, so I got a uh, a side mount optic um, or a, a side mounting optic plate or whatever you want to call it. It's got a side rail right here where you can slide in a mount and you can mount optics on top of on on top of it. Now some of them, uh, I think Texas Weapon Systems makes a Yugo patterned uh, Picatinny rail. Uh, dust cover that you can put on here. I haven't tried that out yet. So I took it out, I shot it, and I was like, wow, I thought my AR was overgassed. But something kept leading me back to it. And I was like, you know what? Since this is on my only semi automatic rifle at the time, I'm going to build this the way I had my AR set up, and I'm going to make it comfortable for me. And I'm going to make this. I'm gonna make this work because I just invested $1,200 and I'm your average Joe. I don't have money just to throw away on stuff like this. So the first thing I thought was like, well, how can I tame some of this recoil? Muzzle brake. So I'm running a, a PWS primary weapon systems muzzle brake. It's like the FC or FSC 47 or something like that. It's your standard uh, thread pitch for AKs. Um, and out of the box, this thing looked pretty dang perfect. Uh, no canned sights, rivets look good. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it, it came looking pretty pretty good and but like I said, had to, mo had to tame some of that recoil and I battled with buddies that have told me, man, switch the stock or I battled with friends, I battled with my own conscience and I just love these old school wooden stocks. Like I said, I'm a bolt gun guy, so I love I love the wood look, the the classic old school look. So I ended up a lot of people <coughs> they'll take cushions or something like that. They'll tape it to the back. They some guys have like uh like butt pads uh, that you can slip over. Poles, butt pads. Uh slip over the back of it, but sometimes you still got to tape them. So what I just did, dude, is I got some goon tape. And what these things have is a metal plate on the back um, to make just to make it a little softer. Now, it doesn't add that much padding, but it does make it more comfortable. And when I present, when I'm moving with the rifle and stuff like that, it does make it grip to my shoulder a little better. And the one, the, the way I prefer to run my rifles is, is a little more modern in the terms of I'm not like this... And I don't, I don't, of course, that if I'm sending shots back to back, I'll lean a little forward, I'll hunch down, I'll bend my knees a little more. But I tend to shoot a little heads up, and most of my optics are lifted a little. Uh, so I can just pull my rifle up, and it's right there. I kind of tend to dig this, this stock a little more towards my collarbone. Um, while I'm shooting. So, you know, with the sturdiness of this, you could use it as a, a beating stick if you really had to. I just chose to, to keep the old school stock. Um, so like I said, the first day I bought it, I had, uh, going back to when I bought it, I had this hollow sun from the AR that was still left over. And I was like, you know what? I want to go magnified. I don't want to go magnified. I like the optic. So I kept it, just threw it on there. I think the next edition, I went out and shot it again. I was like, okay, this is a little better. But I would like, because I'm into the whole C-clamp thing, I would like to be able to hold this like my AR, to be able to, while I'm running with this, to be able to push the rifle up against me, to have some, some leverage against it. So it led me, and I really didn't, dude, I didn't even know really anything about the AK community. I didn't know it was... It's on niche, and it's the AK community, man. It's been so good to me so far. Of course, there's there's trash talkers, but when you get to these guys that really know what they're talking about, the guys that if you don't come to them like an airhead or somebody that's arrogant that thinks they know everything, if you're coming to them with general general questions, they're gonna lead you in the right direction. At least they're gonna they're like anybody else, and I'm the same way. If you ask me my opinion on something and I have experience on it, I'm gonna give you my experience's perspective. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I'm going to give you the honest truth, at least in my eyes, and that's all I can give you. 
So the next step I went with is a Midwest lower hand guard. Um, I think this is extremely similar to their alpha alpha. The alpha series, uh, at least the lower handguard part. So they they put out this whole. I know buddies that have ran them. They don't like them. Uh, long story short, but um, this is what Midwest had. I don't think it's the first model of AK accessory they had for a Yugo lower handguard. I could be wrong. It could be. Um, but you know, they had. I, I picked this guy up. And it's a blocky, it's a really thick piece of, uh, I don't know if it's aluminum or what, but it's pretty thick and uh, really solid. When I felt it before it was on the AK, I was like, seems solid, seems like it'll work. And uh, it'll give me a little more, uh, a little more real estate to start mounting stuff on it, to set it up the way I choose to set stuff up. And the first thing I did was I took that, I, when I sold the AR, I kept the emissary handbrake. I love these handbrakes. I can say, you know, there's there's been people talk trash about them. People that say they break, say they do whatever. Never had an issue with them. And I shoot my guns. I, I don't run. I don't shoot my guns all the time. I've got other stuff I got to do. I work a full time job, and I don't have the kind of money I can go out and just put tens of thousands of rounds on my stuff. Not yet, at least. But this has worked. And I tightened it with a with a you know a screw gun or a drill whatever you know I call them screw guns. So screwed it in. It's been there ever since. It'd be really funny if I was sitting there tearing on it and it just came off all of a sudden. But so I went with an emissary handbrake, <coughs> and I don't think I really uh, dove in on this. This is the the optic is a five o one C. I think that's right. Um, it's basically a knockoff EOTech. Now people will be like, that's nothing compared to EOTech. EOTech rules. This has been nothing but good to me as well. Uh, like I said, I don't run the dog crap out of them, but I've been behind this gun long enough to where if I only had one rifle, if I had to be restricted, no, this might not be my first rifle I would choose. I'd probably choose a bolt gun, but... I'd be comfortable with just having this one, you know. I could get done with, with what I need to get done. Um, so, this has worked for me. Going back to this emissary handbrake, it's their standard handbrake. I don't think they came out with any more. Uh, they probably sell like hotcakes. I see them, uh, uh, they, they kind of got trendy about a year or two ago. Now they kind of fell off a little bit. But what I realized, like I said, I didn't have a lot of AK knowledge, is this whole setup... It's almost like someone would do a Romanian dong, uh, a Romanian AK with a dong lower hand guard and with the shark fin, fin method. And what that shark fin does is the normal dongs are a little long. It, it's hard to pull these mags out. And it, well, it hits the, hits the back end of the dong paws. And uh, so I ended up setting it up like that and it, it's kind of got a modern AK, modern old school AK look. Turn the, turn the rifle around, we got a Streamlight, uh, Lord, I don't even know the, Protac, it's like 1,000 lumens, it's good enough for me, pretty dang bright, it's got a strobe on there, I just mounted a Picatinny on the side of this M-Lock, it does have M-Lock on uh, all three sides, and, uh, or three of the, yeah, all the, yeah, it's actually got, yeah, it's got M-Lock, three different areas, one on the left, one on the right, one on the bottom. <coughs> Streamlight's been nothing but good for me. Um, I've not been, like I said, it's got. I haven't changed, had to change the battery once. Uh, I don't sit there and waste my light. But if I do work around the house and I do practice clearing my house or practice, you know, coming across barriers and stuff with my AK, which I haven't been doing a lot, but I'm going to get a lot. I'm going to try to target into this AK and try to run it as much as I can. That way I can come back and give a second real review on it. Um, probably close to a thousand rounds and I know that's nothing for an AK, but with what I do, it's a lot for me. 
because I've dry, since I had this thing, I probably dry fired this thing 20,000 times, 15 to 20,000 times. I mean, the trigger is ridiculous. You can literally take your finger and the, you won't be able to see it from the video, but dude, it is freaking insane. Um, so what all this led me to was, okay, well, the only thing I'm missing is a sling. So I'm literally running this blue force sling just like I did on my AR. I've got it attached at the back. Now you can put a piece of paracord on here to give it a little more play. Like I said, it's not been a, not been a problem for me. I'm a simple guy. I'm, I spend, as far as my, my grandfather, I spend the most amount of time in the woods that I know of in my circles. Maybe one, one or two other people. I'll, I'll give them some credit. Um, and if I'm, and that's deer, deer season. Um, and I've taken this thing in the woods a hundred times. Uh, I take care of the woods, go in the woods throughout the year to keep my eye on the deer and keep my, keep checking trail cameras and stuff. It's never, never, never did me wrong. This this blue force sling. I reckon I've had it, I've had it on this AK for almost two years. I've had the sling for like three years. I've got some goon tape right here, and that's one thing you'll see about me is I use this goon tape, man, and it really does work for simple stuff. It's like hockey tape, but it's way cooler because it's called goon tape. Y'all need to check them out. So the slings work fine for me. Uh, let me see, am I missing anything? But yeah, man, I mean, it's a, you know, solid rifle. Um, it'll probably outlast me. I've seen, and I and like I said, this is just my little, over the first overview of this gun, and this is how I prefer to set my AK up. A lot of people do it differently. A lot of people do it the same. They say all you need for a rifle is sights, sights, a sling, <coughs> and a light. Now, if I was going bare minimum, I'd probably go either... I'd go iron sights and a light, probably. And I'd say no sling. If I was to have a rifle, if I was an average Joe, if I was an average Joe watching this video and saying, dang, I don't have... Because altogether, maybe this gun, you so say you got 1,200 for this, 200, that's 14, 15, uh, 17. It adds up pretty quick. 200 for the lower hand guard. I got probably two grand in this gun. Uh, maybe a little under. Um, maybe a tiny bit more. All this stuff was bought at my local shops. I didn't order this stuff online, guys, so I paid a little more for it. I like supporting these local companies, but it's killing me sometimes, so got to do a little online shopping when you can and save a little money but uh, I like supporting the local guys so yeah like you know if I was gonna go bare minimum I could buy AK I could buy a Wasser spend seven eight hundred bucks and now there's a Wasser debacle about uh, you know trying to get more in the states and it becoming an issue it's getting more expensive to produce them or to get these parts kits in Romania so anyways um, you could get a washer for eight or nine hundred bucks or seven hundred bucks when they're on sale, and you can put a light on it. And for me, that would be my bare minimum because I'm a bolt gun guy, right? I carry my Glock every day, everywhere I go, church, to the bathroom, everywhere I go, I got my Glock on me. So I would just have this at at the house, out, not in a safe. You know, it's good to it's good to protect protect uh or you know if you got kids running around the house. I don't. I've got three German Shepherds right now. Um, so I'd keep an AK like this out, you know, out in the house just in case I had to grab it, worst case scenario, or I'd keep it in my safe, right? I'd keep my Glock on me. Um, and that'd be, that'd be over with. I'd have this and that, but I'm a bolt gun guy and like four or five months out of the year, however long South Carolina's gun season or hunt season is, which is a long time, I've got my muzzleloader and my bolt action laying around. And that's, that's my primary weapon, guys. Uh, so yeah, guys, this is the overview of the AK. Oh, and another thing, when I went back to, when I went to get this, um, <laughs> I was going to get an ALG trigger in it. And this is before the ALG, like with the, the, the hardness of the metals and the ALG is, is super high quality. And then these, 
the the back of the uh, the bolt is not high quality, so you got pinning back on the back on the back of that, and it flattens it out. And I was looking in this before all that happened. So I went to the local shop, and I was like, guys, I want an ALG in this thing, but I really should kind of be smarter right now and stock up on ammo of 7.62 while I can. With this Russian band, 7.62's drying up, American companies are making it, Norma's got it, <coughs> Hornady's, Hornady produces Hornady Black 7.62, but it's just cheaper to get the Russian stuff. So I was like, man, maybe I should buy ammo, maybe I should put an ALG in it. I was like, but I dry fire this thing all the time. I've worked triggers at least in my lifetime long enough to where if you work them in, they get good. Even with my stock block trigger, it gets better with time the more you use something. And I threw it over to my buddy that works at the shop. He pulled the trigger a couple times and was like, dude, that's the nicest exhaust of a trigger that I felt come out of these rifles. And he said, how many times have you shot this thing? Like 10,000 times? And I was like, nah. At the time, I probably shot it a couple hundred times. I said, but I dry fire this thing like crazy. Every day I'm working with this gun because, dude, I'm like anybody. It took me like a week to figure out how to insert mags correctly. So I ended up just buying the ammo and just running the gun more. So you don't need all the high-end stuff. All the high-end stuff's really nice. ALG triggers are super, super nice. But I don't run competitions. I would like to get into AK competitions. But I want to get more familiar with this platform before because I know there's a bunch of guys out there that take pride in their AKs and run these AKs just as good as they are. So, uh, with that being said, guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Oh, yeah, and before we go, a word from our sponsors. Hey, guys, I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in to the video. Before we leave, like I said, a word from our sponsors. I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's always the number one sponsor, really the only sponsors that matters, and the number two sponsor, the most the second best supporter of this channel is Wendy's Frosties.